What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about the from statement in RxJS. So we've already talked about the of. The of is a creation operator just like the from statement. And what the of does, in case you were not here for that lesson, is it all it does is it takes these three words and turns them into an observable that you can manipulate. And from is almost no different except in the fact that it takes those arguments in the form of an iterable. And the best way to figure out if something's an iterable is I always just say, put it in there. And if it's not an iterable, TypeScript will tell you otherwise. A more production worthy or professional answer would be to Google that beforehand if it's an iterable or not. But essentially the equivalent of from in terms of an, what we would get to produce the same result if we had this of is we would just put it inside of an array just like that and you may be wondering you know t teddy like i thought we were supposed to be doing all this cool asynchronous stuff why are we learning about f these you seem like very simple and they're not even asynchronous we're learning from and of simply because that's the best way to actually create Remember, these are creations. That's the best way how we create an observable that we can actually manipulate. We could just have an array here, but it's not an observable, so we can't use RxJS in it. Just think of this of as we are making our own observable array. In order for us to actually act on the data, it has to be an observable and that's what these creation operators are there for. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go inside of our TypeScript here and we're just going to make a from of our own and also why we're at it as well too, something I forgot, is we're going to make it so that you can actually use a promise with your observable. If you are coming from, you know, if, if you're working already, and you're trying to figure out what a from is as well too, uh, more than likely it's because you're seeing it being used with a promise and we will uh, do that example as well too. So let's go ahead, let's go back here into Visual Studio Code. Let's do this um, for statement, or from statement, I'm sorry. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come up here and we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with our of, except remember, we're going to turn it into an array. So we're gonna go up here, we're gonna go is, cool because teddy is cool <laughs> then we're going to go in here and we're going to subscribe to it because remember we can't actually get these cool values out if we can't subscribe to them right so if we're going to actually get our value back from the observable that we made remember you always have to subscribe no if ands or buts and here we're going to go ahead we're going to pass in a couple values of our own. These are actually callbacks. And what we're going to do is we're just going to, as always, console log them. And you could do other things if you want to, but in this case, we're just gonna stick with a good old fashioned console log. Also here, going to take a little bit more control over the life cycle of this observable. If you don't know what life cycle methods are, I highly suggest that you watch, I think it's the second video on observable life cycle methods. If this does not compute with you next complete, definitely want to check that out. And I've got a really great video explaining how all of this works. So got here, we've got our complete and now what we can do is we can actually just console log these values. Actually, it will console log these values all on its own. So let's just go ahead and run this thing and see what happens. So we're going to go ahead and run it. Just going to go up here. And Teddy is cool and our observable completed. We actually don't <clears throat> need the complete if we don't want to, but I just added it there for educational purposes. So the next situation when you would use a from, and this is a very common real world scenario, is when you have a promise because a promise is in fact an iterable object. So what we need to do is we're gonna go in here and we're just going to call this promise. 
and then we're going to go here and we're just going to new up this promise this promise is a class so remember that you always need to instantiate classes because um in javascript a lot of people don't um think about that so i always try to rem remind people that if it's a class just make sure that you are instantiating so here we've got our promise if you don't know how promises work this is probably the best way to understand is that when a promise revol resolves you just pass back the value after that after it actually resolves and the promise takes care of everything that's kind of like the whole entire beauty of promises so let's go ahead and let's take a look at what this promise looks like i think that will be a good prac a good exercise we can see what it looks like and this is very important is that when you look inside this console log you will not see any data or you will not see resolved because this promise has not been resolved yet and what it is holding is essentially like this actual promise like it's being held inside of there until it comes back and it actually resolves so hopefully that um makes sense observable observable promise so we're what we did is we wrapped this promise in an observable and i'm going to add a little dollar sign right there just for convention we're going to go ahead and take our promise and we're going to toss it into our from statement just like that and then of course we're going to take our observable promise we are going to subscribe to it and this is where we're going to actually output our values up here so we're going to go value and we're going to go console.log we're going to see what this actually produces and i don't think i need that so because that is a callback value so we're going to go back in here go back down we're going to go from and if you look here you will see the actual promise and the promise actually has been fulfilled so uh, i guess it just fulfilled very quickly before it actually even got to that next console log so next thing is that we see our resolve here and if you see into our promise or you look into our promise i should say you'll see that word resolved and it's going to pass it back after the um, actual promise has been resolved and since we've subscribed to this observable it will return it Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.